This is the first and most important episode in the series, Safe Cracking for Everyone. In this episode, I will go over how a Group 2 safe lock works. It's really important that you understand this, as everything builds off knowing how these locks function. Thankfully, they're not too complex. Safe locks are divided into two main categories, the High Security Group 1 and the Low Security Group 2. There's an in-between group, the 2M, which are group 2s with some added manipulation resistance techniques, but not enough to qualify them as group 1s. Group 2s are what I'll be covering since they are by far the most common mechanical safe locks out there. Even if you buy a $5,000 safe, it will come with a lock that anyone can open with no tools in under 5 minutes. As an additional note, there are some locks which don't fall under these categories. For instance, if your dial does not spin when you apply pressure to the handle of the safe, then it's something called a direct entry lock and works quite differently. I will not be covering those in this series. Before I start, feel free to pause at any point and rewatch or write down whatever you need to. There's going to be a lot of new terms thrown at you and it can get confusing at times. Now heading right into it, there's a metal rod called the spline attached to the dial which runs through the door of the safe or in this case the mounting stand and through the lock. The spline is attached to this metal disc here called the drive cam. When I turn the dial, the drive cam directly moves with the dial. You can see that the drive cam has a cutout. This is called the contact area. Resting on the drive cam, you can see a protrusion from a lever. This protrusion is called the nose. When I turn the dial so that the contact area is under the nose, you can see the nose drops down a bit into the contact area. Now there's two points at which the nose will come back into contact with the drive cam. You can see it hit the drive cam here and here. These points of contact are called the left and right contact points. The contact point on the more sloped side of the drive cam here is called the right contact point because when you're standing in front of the lock that appears on your right. These points can actually be felt when spinning the dial. And this is what will end up telling us the combination of the lock. Now behind this drive cam, you can see a circular disc called a wheel. There's three of these wheels. They're stacked on top of each other, one for each number in the combination. The other two are just hidden from us because the third wheel is stacked on top of all of them. The, the one visible here is the third wheel. And it is closest to the back of the lock. The first wheel is closest to the front of the lock, which will be closer to you when you are manipulating the lock. And in between is the second wheel sandwiched between them. Each wheel has a cutout, as you can see. It's called a gate. Gates correspond to a number in the combination. Dialing the correct combination will align the gates. And here's why they need to be aligned. You may have noticed that when I spin the dial, so the contact area is under the nose, the nose does not drop all the way down. That's because attached to the lever is a bar, as you can see here. When the nose is in the contact area, that allows the fence, which is the bar, to rest on top of the wheels and prevents the nose from falling further if the incorrect combination is dialed. So when the correct combination is dialed and the gates are all aligned under the fence, the entire lever assembly can fall down. Turning the dial further will retract the bolt and unlock the safe handle. The safe handle just retracts the big bolts coming out of the door that hold it in place. This bolt is what keeps the handle from turning. So this is really the actual locking mechanism and it is not the handle tur turning which unlocks the safe. The way moving the dial is able to align the wheels in the gates is due to the design of the wheels and the drive cam. Each wheel has a groove on top and a protrusion on the bottom. The groove allows the protrusion of the wheel above it to rest in it. Or in the case of the third wheel, it allows the protrusion on the bottom of the drive cam to rest in it. If you imagine my lockpick as a wheel, you can see that the protrusion 
will move smoothly until it hits this metal stopper, at which point it will pick up the next wheel, meaning it will cause the next wheel to spin with it. You can see this when I spin the dial. It moves the drive cam by itself until it hits a stopper, and if I keep spinning the dial, then eventually it will pick up the second wheel. So here, the third wheel is spinning with the drive cam because it has hit that stopper. It takes at most one full revolution to pick up a wheel. So if I'm spinning all of the wheels in one direction and I reverse directions, it takes a full revolution until the protrusion on the drive cam hits the metal stopper on the third wheel. It can take less than one full revolution depending on the state of the lock. For instance, if the protrusion is resting halfway, you can pick up the next wheel with only half rotation. So if I have the third wheel spinning with the dial here, with the drive cam, and I rotate halfway in the other direction and I just leave it like that, then when you come back to the lock, you only need half rotation to pick up that third wheel again. The standard opening procedure for opening a lock is spinning the dial four times to the left to the first number, meaning you pass it three times and you stop on the fourth time. Then you turn three times to the right to the third number, meaning you pass the third number twice and you stop on the third time. Then reverse directions yet again and go twice to the left to the third number. So pass it once and stop on the second time. Then you turn the dial to the right until the lock opens, which is when the dial doesn't want to spin anymore. That's when the bolt gets retracted. Maybe you already know the reason for this. Pause for a bit and think about it. Maybe it would help visualize things and you can check to see if you're correct. Now, the reason is because you don't know the state of the wheels when you go to manipulate. Turning the dial to the left four times ensures that all the wheels are picked up, which means they're all spinning together. It takes up to one full revolution for the drive cam to pick up the third wheel, remember? So up to one more full revolution for the second wheel to pick up, and then up to one more full revolution for the third wheel to pick up for a total of three revolutions of the dial to be 100% sure you have picked up all the wheels and that they are all spinning together. But you still have to go to the first number in the combination. So the three revolutions you already did means you passed that first number three times. So keep turning the dial and stop on the fourth time. So that's why you spin four times to the first number, even though it only takes three rotations to ensure all the wheels have been picked up. And it's the same thing with the other wheels and numbers in the combination. If you haven't figured it out by now, this is why the wheel closest to the drive cam is called the third wheel. It's because it corresponds to the third and final number in the combination. Since it gets picked up first, that means you cannot set the position of any other wheel without disturbing the position of the third wheel. You have to set that third wheel last. The first wheel, being last to pick up since it is furthest from the drive cam, is capable of being left alone while moving the other wheels to wherever you want, as long as you don't turn too much and pick it up again. So if you have a lock already, I highly recommend take off the back cover and mess around with it. Look and feel for yourself how it works. Feel the contact points on the dial. Feel what it feels like to pick up a wheel. To feel greater resistance in the dial with each successive wheel being picked up. Every group two lock works this way. There's a few minor differences, but that only pertains to the actual manipulation, and I'll be covering that in later videos.